Hey, this is Craig Poolman with Pool Specialist. Today we have a short video for you on how to briefly install, but more importantly, debug a Levelor water leveling system. So I have one of the boxes here, and we're going to go ahead and open it up, and we're going to go through a couple of the items. Of course, you come with the manual on it, which is actually pretty well written. And then you have your control box. Um, this is what you're going to hang on the wall, and it's going to tell you, it's going to control the valve coming on and off and identify when the sensor is out of the water and it needs to start filling the pool. Next, we have the ever important special screws. You're going to notice that these are rather long and special, and you're going to need these screws in order to mount this box on the wall. We have an autofill valve, and of course I've explained this in other videos, but most importantly, this has a direction on it. So you'll see a little arrow here. Some of the valves have an arrow here and an arrow here, but basically you're going to put the water supply in on this side, and this side is going to come out to the pool. On the top of it, you have a little knob like a spigot, and that does exactly the way a spigot would work. If you turn it all the way clockwise, it's going to close down the water. And if you spin it counterclockwise, it's going to open up the valve and allow as much water to flow as possible. So if you turn it all the way clockwise, you have full volume of water. Then you have your solenoid. And the solenoid, if you turn it counterclockwise for about a quarter turn, it will allow the water to come through this valve. We're going to demonstrate this later, and then when you're done, you would actually turn it clockwise. That's our valve. If we actually have an equalization tube, this would be the cover that goes on the equalization tubes. Equalization tubes coming from the pool have limited capability. You can't go very far with them because if you get water and air mixed inside them, then they don't equalize out and the autofill will not respond correctly. So I'm a little bit apprehensive about using these. If they're right next to the pool, great, they're fantastic. But if they're 20 feet away at the equipment pad, um, I question the how well that actually works. And you will actually have to continually pour chlorine in it so that you don't get um, any type of algae in there which will slime up on the actual sensor. Here is your sensor. Um, it comes with both sides. This side would actually go in the equalization tube if you're using an equalization tube. This side would typically go in the skimmer. If you're building a new pool, I would strongly recommend that you run a special conduit to run this through over to the skimmer and then mount this in the skimmer. You could alternatively run a conduit somewhere to the side wall of the pool and mount it on the sidewall of the pool. If you have a spillover, or what's called an infinity edge, you would mount this in the basin, because the basin, when it gets low, would then turn on the autofill, and the water would go back to the pool to fill the pool. Once the pool is filled, it will spill over into the basin, and eventually fill up the basin to turn this sensor off. Okay, so we're going to start with the actual controller. So you'll notice it comes with a plastic cover. If we take that off, then that will actually expose the four holes that these special screws go in that will actually hold it to the wall. And they go in to that larger hole, and you will need to take a screwdriver in order to actually press it through. And then you'll have a molly in the wall that that will actually go to. Okay, next, if you remove this lower panel, you will find on the back of it, it has wiring diagrams for both 240 and 120 volts. And then you will use the color codes to appropriate select this. From the factory, it comes wired for 240 volts. That is actually not my preferred. I would prefer to wire to 120 volts and then give it its own GFI breaker. That way it doesn't interfere with anything. 
A lot of times what happens if you hook it up to the 240 volts, it, if the pump breaker trips or something happens, then this goes out and the autofill no longer works. So we're going to rewire this so that it runs for 120 volts. Next, you, over here in the low voltage segment of it, you'll notice two orange wires and two blue wires. The orange wires are going to go to the sensor and the blue wires are going to go to the solenoid valve or the autofill valve itself. On the top portion of the sensor, you'll find three lights. You have a power light, you have a sensor light, and you have a fill light. Of course, once we have power connected to this, the green light is going to be on. The sensor light will turn on once there, it needs a water demand, so i.e. the sensor is not touching the water. And then finally, the fill light will turn on green until it times out. Now, initially when this comes out of the box, this has a 20 minute fill time. And then if we take this panel off, we can go ahead and find that we have three jumpers up here. And jumper S1, jumper A, jumper B. If we cut A or B, then we go to a 40 minute fill time. If we cut both jumpers A and B, then we go to a 60 minute fill time. If we want an unlimited fill time, then we are going to cut jumper S1. Okay, just for visual effect, so that you can see it a little bit better, we made the connections outside of the box, but normally you would put in a strain relief on the bottom of the box, clamp the wire to it, and the connections would be made inside of the high voltage area or chamber inside the box. You'll notice that the green wire goes to the green, the white wire goes to the black and white, combined with the black and yellow, and then the black wire, the hot side, goes to the black, and then sometimes it's just a red wire, and sometimes it's black and red. Okay, so this is the sensor wire that comes with the system. The distributors typically stock the one that comes 200 feet. Now you can also purchase this in 100 feet, 150 feet, and 250 feet. And the sensor wire itself is actually nice quality. And you typically have more than is required for the job. So I tend to like to use this wire to also run to the valve, the autofill valve. So you want to make sure that you color code everything so that when it comes into the actual controller that you know it's coming from the sensor or it's coming from the autofill valve. Yeah. We have a picture of the full connection. So you'll see that I've coded the autofill valve with blue to match the blue wires that come out for the autofill. And I've coded the sensor in red you could also do orange if you have orange tape or just label them and they are then connected to the orange wires. You will need to make these connections inside the chamber inside the box and then put a strain relief. We've only done this for purposes so that you can actually see the connections and you'll find that we've got everything wired up, we're ready to go and so now we're going to give you some demonstrations of how this actually works. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate how this actually works. You'll see that we have this plugged in, we have a green light for our power, and our sensor is off, and our fill is off. We have the sensor actually in a little bowl of water, and you'll notice that if we take out the sensor, the yellow sensor light will turn on. You'll have a brief delay, and then your actual autofill valve We'll click on and you'll see that the fill light will turn on as well. So now you can see that it is actually functioning. The fill light is green. Once it times out, that fill light will turn orange. If we place the sensor back into the water, you'll see the sensor light turns off. 
And once the sensor light turns off, the still light will stay on for a few minutes, and then it too will shut off. This is just a timing mechanism to make sure that it is in a false positive or a false negative for the water being at the correct level. So you can see that that water is shut off. So this is our fill valve. I would highly recommend that you test the fill valve before you install it. It has a high failure rate and sometimes it happens with the solenoid, sometimes there's issues with the valve, whatever. But one of the things that I noted earlier was that you could actually turn the solenoid counterclockwise about a quarter turn and then the water will turn on. Now, this is convenient if you have to fill the pool while you're vacuuming or backwashing or something like that. However, you need to take your truck keys and put them on the solenoid so that you cannot drive away and leave the fill on. Then, in order to shut it, you would simply turn it clockwise and tighten it up, and that will shut the valve off. Now, if you're actually at the house and you find that your fill light is on and you're, you're not getting any water coming out of your valve, you can check the voltage at the power coming out. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your meter and you're going to turn it to volts, AC volts, because it's AC volts coming out of this. And we'll go ahead and stand this here. I don't know if you'll actually be able to read the numbers on here, but once that fill light turns on, you should get in excess of 24 volts because that's a 24 volt AC valve. And typically, without a load on it, it's going to read somewhere around 26 to 29 volts. So we look here and it's reading 29 volts. And of course, it's low voltage, so I can go ahead and touch that. So this would be on the blue leads coming out. We notice that we have the 29 volts to drive our valve. So if the valve's not turning on, then chances are there's something wrong with the solenoid or something wrong with the valve. Sometimes you can just replace the solenoid. Other times you're going to have to replace the valve. That's just something that you're going to have to figure out yourself. We like to install the valves so that they have unions on them because they frequently do fail. If they get dirt in them, they're going to stay on or they'll stay off, typically stay on once they open. And then you could take the valve apart and clean it, which I've demonstrated on another video on autofills, and put that back together. So here is the reason that you want to check that. You always want to have a voltmeter with you, and then you can make sure that you actually do have the voltage coming out to the fill valve. So next is a lot of times you'll get there and you'll find that the sensor light is on. Well, you want to make sure that your sensor is actually in the water. And you may want to clean the bottom of the sensor because if it gets slime on it, it can act as though it's actually in the water. So find it, identify it, clean it. And if that sensor light does not go off, then there's probably a problem with the wire going over to the sensor. A lot of times people run these wires directly underground and not in a conduit. And they run them through the landscaped area because that's the most convenient. What happens is the landscapers come in and they plant new flowers, they cut the edges, etc., etc., and they actually cut the wire. Well, fine, you have a nice fancy sensor here and it has some stainless steel probes on it to be in the water. However, if you cut this wire and that wire is exposed underground and the ground is moist, then it believes that it's actually you actually have water, it will give you a false positive. And so then that sensor light will stay on. So if you remove the sensor at the actual connection, which would be the orange wires, then you can see whether that, that sensor light goes off. If that sensor light goes off, there's probably something wrong with the wiring going over to the sensor and you may have to replace it. That concludes our video on the Leveler Autofill. 
and how to debug it, how it gets wired up, and is installed. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop us a like, and have a great day.